Good morning. Uh, yep, it's Uncle Lou here. Uh, yeah, how you doing? Hope everyone ha is having a great Saturday. Uh, at least as great as it can be, considering it's not a football Saturday. Uh, yeah, I'm still about three months away from that, uh, which sucks. Uh, yeah, but there's always something to talk about. Uh, you know, college football is year round. Uh, you know, there is no college football season anymore. Uh, there's just the part of the year where they play the games and the part of the season where they don't play, or part of the year where they don't play the games. College football, 365. Uh, yep, yeah, 24-7, too, has to be. Uh, and it is, too, too. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, we're going to talk today about the running back situation for the University of Georgia Bulldogs. Um, this is a uh, video by request. Somebody wanted to, uh... To hear a video about what I thought about the running back situation. Now, obviously, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure it out, but uh, running back situation is is uh, probably the least worrious worrisome, uh, if that's a word. I don't know. Running back uh, running back position is probably the least worrisome position uh, on the team for UGA, even with the question marks we have uh, with Nick Chubb. So we'll we'll start there with Nick Chubb. Um, the question people, you know, want to know, I get asked all the time my opinion on this, uh, when will Nick Chubb play? Uh, I think he plays week one against UNC. I don't know if he'll, I don't know if he'll start, uh, you know, I don't know if he'll get five carries or 25 carries, uh, but I am 99.9% .9 sure that Nick Chubb will play week one, um, against UNC. The recovery that this guy has made uh is nothing short of miraculous um it's just unbelievable how far he's come in such a little amount of time i mean the injury happened uh october 10th of last year so what are we november december january february march april may uh so what's that six seven months out uh, from his injury uh, uh from everything you hear and read his uh, his rehab and his conditioning and, and, and all that is way ahead of schedule. And I fully expect Nick Chubb to play week one against UNC. Uh, it is a question mark, of course, uh, how much he'll play. And, you know, I, I think some of that will be determined by how the game is going uh, and things like that. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not getting into the the X's and O's of the North Carolina UGA game. I'll make another video on that for you uh, if you need me to or if you want me to. Uh, or even if you ask me to. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, so Nick Chubb, yes, I believe he will play week one. Um, I expect him to have a great year. Physically, there's no doubt in my mind he will be back to 100% this year. The question mark I always have with guys with knee injuries is, of course, the mental aspect of it. And I always use Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall as my um, examples. Todd Gurley was able to get over the mental hump quickly, uh, you know, his first time out, actually. Uh, and, and get right back to the way he was pre-injury. Keith Marshall, he recovered 100% physically. Mentally, I don't think he ever got it back, at least not at UGA. Uh, now, I hope, uh, you know, I wish him well in the NFL. He's with the Redskins now. Um, you know, I, I wish nothing but the best for the guy, but it, it just seemed like watching him pre-injury and post-injury, mentally, he was not the same player. So with Nick Chubb, that's the, that's the only question mark I have, the, the, the mental side of it. Physically, I, I think I think the dude could play next week, uh, and I'm dead serious about that. So that brings us to Sony Michelle, another guy that I have absolutely zero worries about at all. I actually believe Sony Michelle may be the best football player uh, on our team. I think that honor went to Leonard Floyd last year. You know, Leonard Floyd could do it all. He could play multiple positions. He can rush the passer. Uh, he, he's decent against the run. He can drop back in coverage. Uh, the, you know, the, there's nothing he couldn't do defensively, and I feel like Sony Michelle is that way on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, the dude had over 1,100 yards rushing last year. He can play the slot receiver. He can catch out of the backfield. He can block. He's fast. Uh, and word on the street is, a little birdie told me... Uh, that he's put on 10 to 15 pounds already this offseason and has not lost any speed at all. So that's bad news for opposing defenses this year. Um, if there's been any knock on Sony Michelle in the past is that maybe he was a little undersized. 
uh, and maybe didn't hold up too well uh, over the course of the season with, with, with a lot of, of contact, things like that. Now, he's never had any major injuries. Had an arm issue, of course. Um, but a little bit of extra weight can't hurt, um, especially if it hasn't compromised his speed at all. So I have no worry at all about Sony Michelle's ability. If for some reason we had to play a game or two or three without Nick Chubb, I, I don't, you know... You, you hate to play without your best player, but we're we're so lucky that we have a guy uh, like Sony Michelle that can step in. I mean, this guy is an this guy's an NFL talent. He will he will be playing on Sundays, uh, and, and he will you know be making an impact on Sundays. He's that good. Uh, so we're we're blessed at UGA that we have him there. Now after Sony Michelle, it gets a little bit interesting. We have, of course, Brendan Douglas, who's been enrolled at UGA since 1982. Uh, at least it seems that way. Uh, he, he's been reliable for the most part. He, he, he had an in, an, uh, a fumble issue um, two seasons ago. Uh, but, I, you know, from what I could tell last year, although he didn't play as much last year as he did two years ago, that's been uh, pretty much worked out. He is reliable. He's a, he's a sledgehammer type you know he's he, he's not juking and dodging a lot of guys out there i mean he's pretty much looking for somebody to run over um i can see us utilizing a guy like that in short yardage situations or goal line situations uh, maybe even at fullback every once in a while um speaking of fullback since this is a running back video i'll touch on fullback real quick i do not expect fullback to play as nearly as big of a role at uga going forward as it did under mark rick i just don't see it happening uh, we ran a fullback, it seems like, 90% of the time under Mark Rick. I do not see that happening with Kirby Smart. I think you're going to see a lot more one-back sets uh, or, or potential two-back sets um, without a fullback. So, you know, Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb in the game at the same time, uh, that, that sort of thing. But, but for, uh, the days, you know, of, of UGA having a fullback and pounding it up the middle 35 times a game, uh, those days might be over. Not that we won't run it up the middle, but I don't think you're going to see the fullback nearly as much as what we've become accustomed to seeing. Uh, so moving on from Brendan Douglas, you have Tay Crowder, who uh, you know has been there for a couple of years, hasn't played that much, did play in the spring game. Uh, a talented kid, just hasn't been able to 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 you know crack the two or three deep at the running back position to to get his opportunities. Will that change this year? I'm not convinced. Um, it's it's not that he's not any good. Uh, he is good. It, it, the level of talent at running back at UJ is just so high. I mean, you you really have to be an elite level talent to see the field at, at running back at UGA. Um, so I, I I have a feeling that Tay Crowder may get squeezed out because right behind him you have Elijah Holyfield coming in who I do expect to play a lot this year. No way we redshirt this guy. You can't afford to redshirt running backs anymore. Uh, any running back that can get drafted is going to go pro after three years. There's limited tread on a running back's tires, and any running back that can get drafted is not going to waste um, carries uh, in college uh, that he could be getting paid for in the NFL. Sure, you have a few that come back for their fourth year, but by and large, the overwhelming majority of, of NFL quality and caliber running backs go pro um, after uh, their third year and for that reason you can't really afford to redshirt a guy that you think has the type of potential that Holyfield might have so I expect him to play this year um, and I expect him to play um, a, a significant role um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if by the end of the year he was third on the chart uh, behind Chubb and Michelle and past um, Douglas and Crowder and then that brings us to the last guy, the newest uh, UGA signee for 2016, uh, Brian Herrion, or Herrion, I think his name is, Herrion. Um, this guy was a late signee. He was waiting on grades. Uh, he had to pretty much make straight A's his last, uh, his last uh, period of high school, his last semester, whatever you call it, in high school. I don't know. It's been 20 years since I went there. Uh, yep, Master Bay. Uh, so how old am I? You can figure it out from that, I guess. Uh, some of you can't. If you're an Alabama fan, you probably you have to use the calculator. Uh, yep, you have to. Uh, but anyway, uh, I digress again. Uh, what was I saying, Brian Herrion? Uh, now this guy's supposed to be pretty good. Now he wasn't he wasn't very highly recruited, and some of the recruiting services didn't even bother ranking this guy because they didn't think he was going to become eligible. But he did. So he signed with UGA. 
Uh, you watch his highlight video, he looks like an All-American. Problem with that is you can make almost any high school player look like an All-American on a highlight video. I hate to burst a lot of bubbles with that because I know we love watching highlight videos from, you know, the income, you know, Jacob Eason and Nicole Hardman and um, that guy, that guy that's going to Cal. Uh, that guy. Uh, but, yep, I have to. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, his highlight video. I, you know, we needed another running back. So in that respect, I'm glad we signed this guy. We needed another body at the running back position. Uh, you know, we've we've had the injury bug and the suspension bug hit us at the running back position the last several years in a row. So anytime you can get another quality back in, I think that's a good thing. Uh, will he play this year? I don't know. Uh, like, I, I, he'll he's going to be last or next to last on the depth chart, I would assume. Uh, but like I said, you can never have too many quality running backs, so I, I'm I'm glad to have him. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, you know, th there's not a lot of exciting or interesting things to talk about really with the running back situation because, like I said, we're loaded at running backs. What seems like year in and year out. Um, so there's not really any worries or weaknesses or anything like that to try to talk about or dissect on a video, but. Uh, you know, I would say that running back position is definitely the bright spot for UJ this coming year, just as it has been the last several uh, years. Uh, and that's regardless of who plays quarterback, whether it's uh, Eason or Lambert. Um, I have no worries about the running back um, position. Anyway, if you want to hear me talk about any other position on the team, other issues, concerns, you know, whatever, uh, what brand of root beers is better, whatever the case is, let me know. Uh, and Uncle Lou will talk about it for you. Uh, yeah, but until next time, have a great day and an even bo uh, better morning. Tell these people goodbye, Mrs. Lou. Bye. Yep, even Mrs. Lou, say goodbye there.